Welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to create a routine similar to the previous tutorial, but here we're going to use support geometry to pass the value between rules. Let's open up a new sketch here, and I'm going to begin by creating a line. Now I'll dimension the line at 15 millimeters, for example. And let's finish the sketch. Launch the parameters window. And let's name our dimension. We'll call it temp var, temporary variable. Click done. Let's make our sketch visible. Right click, visibility. And I'll drag the dimension over to this side. Our iLogic browser remains open. Let's give input list box a slow double click. And let's rename it. We'll call it rule one. Click outside and let's double click to open it up for editing. In this rule, we're just going to set the temporary variable. So temp var equals length. In the next line, I'm going to use I equals, let's insert a message box snippet to show the user we've done it. Let's replace the text between the double quotations. Temp var, space equals sign space. Now outside of the double quotations, space, amper symbol, space. Temp var. And for the title, we'll call it rule one. Let's take a moment to review what we've done. The value from the variable length will be placed in temp var. Let's click OK. OK again. And let's modify rule 2. In this rule, I'm going to use the input box function. Length equals. Now let's bring in an input box. We'll replace the message. I'll type set length. For the title, I'll type rule 2. And for default entry, let's replace that with length. So in other words, we're retrieving the default entry from the variable length. We're done with rule 2. Let's click OK. Now let's modify rule 3. In this rule, we're going to use the if else statement. And this is to notify the user whether or not the length of the part has been changed. Let's replace the comparison statement. It'll go like this. If temp var equals length, then now let's drag this line of code within the if statement. Right click to copy. And let's control V to paste. Let's change the title to rule 3. Same here, rule 3. And let's remove from this message the word not. Now, if temp var equals length, then this line is going to execute. But if the length has been changed, Visual Basic will execute this line. Let's click OK to test our routine, and click OK. Lastly, let's modify our master rule. I'll just select and delete all this code, expand the Run Other branch, and double-click on Run Rule. Let's type rule 1 here. Now copy and paste this line of code. Paste it below. And again. We'll just replace the rule number here, rule 2, and below rule 3. Let's bring in another line of code. We'll double click the update when done snippet. And here it is. All right, we're ready to test the routine. The first step. We place the value in temp var and let the user know about it. 
so tempvar now stores the value of 20. Let's click OK. Now for our second step, we set the length of our part. I'm going to enter 25 and click OK. And in step 3, we let the user know that the length has been changed. Let's run the rule again. Let's click OK. Right-click on the master. Select Run Rule. Tempvar displays as 25. OK. This time, let's leave the length as is. Click OK. And we receive the message the length has not been changed. Let's click OK. In this tutorial, we've covered one way to pass values between rules. There's different ways to do this, but you can use this routine until we cover some other methods. This is just one way to use supporting geometry in your coding routine. And this concludes our tutorial about using support geometry in your routines. Next, we're going to pick up the topic of debugging.